Hi guys. So in this video, what we're going to do is we are going to take um, what we've learned about the chain rule and we're going to apply it to what we know about derivatives so far. So for those of you that don't remember, a derivative is giving us our instantaneous rate of change or it's giving us a function for the slope at every given point on our line. So a derivative is giving an equation for the slope and I'm just going to put in parentheses instantaneous rate of change at any given point on our function. So um, what we have here is we have this cubed root of x squared minus 1 squared function. And what we want to do is we want to find when is the derivative 0 and what is the derivative undefined? Now, we could do this by, by simply starting by taking the derivative, setting it equal to zero, and then finding where it's undefined or finding what's outside of the domain. Let's do that. But then I want us to analyze the graph and see why. So where the derivative is zero is where this equation would have a slope of zero. That's what we're asking. So we want to know when that equation is going to have a slope of zero. Let's take the derivative of that. Remember that the derivative of this, we're going to have to use a chain rule. This is a composite function. Right now, we kind of have a chain rule inside of a chain rule, but we could rearrange this so that we don't have that. If we rearrange this equation, this is exactly the same thing as x squared minus 1 to the 2 thirds power. We know that because of rational exponents. This is squared. This is a cubed root. As a rational exponent, that becomes 2 thirds power. So that being said, we now can identify what is our outside function and what is our inside function. The outside function is that 2 thirds. And the inside, or our u, would be x squared minus 1. So let's go ahead and just write that down so that we can see it. f of u is going to be u to the 2 thirds, which makes u x squared minus 1. Now, I want to take the derivative of the outside function. I want to take the derivative of this. The derivative of this, you're going to multiply the 2 thirds down front, and then you're going to subtract one exponent. So the derivative of this is going to be f prime of u equals 2 thirds u to the 2 thirds minus 1 is negative 1 third. 2 thirds minus 1 is negative 1 third. And of course, we could write that by putting that negative one third by that one third can go down into the denominator and putting a cubed root in the denominator. Let's take the derivative of our u. u prime is going to be 2x. And that's just using the power rule again. So the rule for the taking the derivative using the chain rule is to do the outside, keep the inside the same and then multiply it by the derivative of the inside. So the outside function, when I took the derivative of that, it was 2 thirds to the negative 1 third power. Don't be lame. Keep the inside the same. Don't be lame. Keep the inside the same. This is our inside. x squared minus 1. And then what we need to do is we need to multiply that by the derivative of the inside. The derivative of x squared minus 1 is 2x. This is our f prime of x before we have simplified it. That's before we have simplified it. So let's go ahead and simplify this. Well, I can multiply 2x by 2 over 3. And that's going to give me 4x over 3. And then this, I can drop that down into the denominator. And a one-third power is a cubed root. So really, this is 4x over 3 
times the cubed root of x squared minus 1. That's our derivative. That is our derivative. The derivative gives us the instantaneous rate of change at any given point on this line. It gives us the slope. So really, this is our m equation. This is our slope equation. So if I wanted to find the slope at 1, I could plug a 1 in. If I wanted to find the slope at 0, I could plug a 0 in. If I wanted to find the slope at 78, I could plug 78 in. Now we need to address what the question is asking. For which f prime of x is the slope 0? For which values on this graph is the slope 0? That's what this is asking for. So we're going to take our slope equation and set it equal to 0. So right here, this is going to be f prime of x equals 0. So we're going to have 0 equals 4x over 3 times the cubed root of x squared minus 1. Well, when I solve for this, I can multiply by my denominator. And algebra's golden rule is what I do to one side, I must also do to the other side. So this cancels out. And 0 times anything is 0. So we have 0 equals 4x. Divide by 4. x equals 0. So on the original equation, on the original equation, when x is 0, when x is 0, then the slope is 0. Now, I mean, we could find the actual point. To find the point, you plug this back into our original equation. 0 squared is 0. 0 minus 1 is 1. So the cubed root of 1 is 1. Okay? So at the point 0, 1, on f of x, that's the original, the slope is 0. Do you remember back in the beginning of the class when I said it's good to write down exactly what you mean? It helps. Um, so there we go. That's the first part. The second part asks, when is this undefined? When is it undefined? When is there no way to find the slope? Well, we would take this function and we would find what is outside of its domain. Remember, there are three main domain restrictions. Square root or an even root. Dividing by zero. And logs. We have a possibility of dividing by zero. If this were to equal zero in our denominator, then the function would be undefined. And it would be undefined at 1 and negative 1. So f prime of x is undefined when 3 times the cubed root of x squared minus 1 equals 0, which is x equals plus and minus 1. That's when it's undefined. Let's analyze that. What the heck does all of this mean? I see mathematically what I just did. Mathematically, I found when it was undefined by just stating the domain, which we did in pre-calc a lot. Mathematically, I found when this equals 0 by setting it equal to 0. I did that in pre-calc all the time. What's the difference here? So here is our graph. What we just said was that, let's see if I can make this go side by side here. And I want this. Okay, so what we just said was that zero, our slope equals zero. Look at that. Look at that point, zero, one. Now, if I put the equation y equals one in here, that's a slope of zero, right? That's a slope of zero at this point. So at the original point on the graph, zero, one, our slope is zero. Our slope is not zero anywhere else. Our slope is not zero anywhere else. The next thing that we solved for was that plus and one, plus and minus one, the derivative function 
is undefined. Well, what happens at plus, plus and minus one? There's a point. There's a point. Functions are not differentiable at a point because as you go this way, this is a negative, 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 negative slope. And then all of the sudden, it's a positive, 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 positive slope. And this one's different because it goes to zero first and then it switches back to negative. This doesn't go to zero first. There is no slope of zero here. So, um, right here, if I were to say, show me my derivative function, what you are going to find at those cusps, you're going to find asymptotes. Let's turn this off. There are asymptotes at 1 and negative 1. And if you look, our slope is negative all the way through here. This is a negative value. Remember, the derivative gives you the value of the slope. So right here, our slope is negative. It gives us a negative value. Yes, the graph is increasing, but we're talking specifically about the value of our graph. Right here, our slope is positive. And look, all of these are positive values until we get to here where it's zero, zero, zero. And then all of these are negative values, and this is negative slopes, positive slopes, and all those are positive values. So that's how we can analyze this graph. That's how we use the chain rule to find when it's zero and when it's undefined.